Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. Hello and welcome to the Leveling Up podcast with me, George Swift. The Leveling Up podcast is here to give you the personal development, the entrepreneurial development and the business growth that you, the ambitious business owner, desires. I'm here to give you the inspiration, the motivation and above all else to challenge your aspirations to take you and your business to the next level. Don't forget, subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. In today's episode, we're going to be exploring doing the right things for the right reasons. Believe it or not, it cannot always be that easy or obvious to tell what are the right things to do in business and in life, and more specifically, are you doing them for the right reasons or not? Are you doing them with integrity? Are you doing them for positive outcomes, for positive uh, drivers and positive motivators, or is it a negatively driven action, or is it a negatively driven goal? You think it would be easy sometimes to tell, I'm telling you now, more often than not, it can be quite hard to determine what is the right thing to do in any given moment, and more specifically, for the right reasons. When it comes to understanding and uncovering the motivations behind our goals, actually, there's a, a quadrant that I often share with people. And I want to share that quadrant with you right now. So I want you to imagine there's a square, and within that, you've got a vertical line, a horizontal line. So you've got these quadrants, these four squares, okay? Top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. And if you imagine in the bottom right, what you've got is you've got the wrong things for the wrong reason. On the bottom left, you've got the wrong things for the right reason. In the top right quadrant, You've got the right things for the wrong reason. And in the top left-hand box, you've got the right things for the right reasons. And then I want you to imagine that within those squares, within those boxes, it's not just polarized, as in it's the wrong thing for the wrong reason. Actually, there's gradients. So as you move further and further to that bottom right-hand corner of the main overriding square, you're getting more and more increasingly into the wrong things for the wrong reasons. Does this make sense? And then the further you go up into the top left-hand corner of this overall box, the more you increasingly get into the right thing for the right reasons. So in other words, you could arguably say that in the furthest top left corner, you've got the best things to go for for the best reasons. And in the bottom right-hand corner, right in that far, far corner, you've got kind of the worst things to go for for all of the worst reasons. And what you want to do, of course, is you want to make sure that your goals, that your outcomes, what it is you're striving to achieve in business and in life, fall into that top left hand box. And ideally, you want them as far north and west as you possibly can in that box. In other words, you want those goals to be as far as you possibly can into that top left hand corner. Really important this is because believe it or not, our intentions behind our goals, the motivations behind our goals actually can determine a number of factors. Not only will they determine our success rate, they'll also determine our fulfillment in terms of how good we feel about achieving a goal, how positive we feel about going for a goal. It will also determine the positive outcome, not just for ourselves, but everybody else involved. In Buddhism, they have a saying, which is, you know, they don't necessarily believe in right and wrong per se. What they believe is in intent. So in other words, if you give money to charity to get something back, actually, they believe, as I understand it from my limited understanding of Buddhism, they believe that you don't get back what it is you actually want to get back because you're not giving unconditionally, you're giving conditionally, and therefore you don't have the purest of intent behind that giving. It's like Christmas is coming, you give a present to someone because you want to get a present back from them. Obviously, you get to see that's not the right reasons to give a present. Or you give a big present to your wealthiest uncle because you're hoping that you're going to get more back than you gave them. Does this make sense? That's obviously not the right reason as well. Equally, it's not the right reason to give someone a present just because they gave you a present and you feel bad that you didn't get them a present, right? Because you're just going to, you know, potentially resent them for that. You're going to potentially resent yourself for feeling like that, you know, and you're now buying presents for people you don't actually want to buy presents for. And, you know, it's kind of like, it's all a little bit tarnished, a bit tainted. So hopefully if you look at it in terms of the Christmas present analogy, 
you can see that, you know, there is definitely, you know, a right reason and a wrong reason for giving gifts. And it's not as clear cut as you might think. So if you know that someone's going to give you a gift and you give them a gift to stop you feeling guilty, then Buddhism would probably say that wasn't the right reason. I'd probably say it wasn't the right reason as well. But if you're going to give a gift back to somebody because you really appreciate that they took the time to think of you and now you want to appreciate and let them have that same feeling of appreciation that you had and you want to pass that on, then that would be the right reason. So the actual giving of the present is the thing. And it may be the right thing to do to buy them a present, but there's actually a wrong reason for doing it and there's a right reason for doing it. And people would argue, well, does it matter? Because the end result is... You got a present from them, you gave a present to them, and that's kind of it. But actually, there's so many more layers into our experience as human beings, our experience um, of life. And also, there's so many different layers, I believe, in terms of, you know, the, the intent we feel and how it's given and how that gets passed on. So, for example, you know, in many cultures, they cook with love. And the reason they cook with love is they genuinely believe that the food tastes better when it's cooked with love. So, you know, if you go to the idea of like home cooking, for example, and it's cooked by someone, you know, a mum with love for her family, there are many top chefs, you know, who are, you know, absolutely matter of fact kind of people. They're not all woo wah and everything else that will absolutely believe that that food is cooked with love and it tastes better because it's cooked with love. If you're into watching things like, you know, the Bake Off or MasterChef, you'll often hear, you know, the celebrity chefs or the master chefs, you know, the, the experts in the room, you'll often hear them talking about, you know, the love that goes into cooking. They, they can taste it. They can perceive the love that goes into those cakes. Now, you could argue it's a sponge cake with the same ingredients as another sponge cake with the same ingredients. However, the nuances and the flavor of those cakes could be the tiny subtleties of the care and attention that you're giving to the cake when you're making it that makes those little but sometimes drastic tangible differences. So rather than having a, you know, a Mr. Kipling cake straight out of the box, what you end up with is a home-baked cake with the same ingredients, pretty much the same recipe, but the care and attention and the love that went into the home-baked cake just makes it taste better. Now, moreover, not only will the product of your efforts potentially be tarnished if you're going for them for the wrong reasons or massively enhanced because you're going for them for the right reasons. On top of that, if there's any other human being involved, we have a radar for this stuff and people will pick up on it. So people will pick up that when you're giving a gift because you think you should give a gift rather than you want to give a gift, even if you smile the same way and you fake it and you, you know, you're trying to convince everybody, including yourself, that actually you're giving this present for all the right reasons, don't be surprised that the other person doesn't pick up on that. We are master readers of each other. We've evolved over millions of years to understand each other's intentions and we can see stuff that we can't even remotely begin to perceive. In fact, they showed this when they were looking at lie detectors and they film, this is going back a little while, and they filmed people's interviews when they were questioning them about crimes. And there was a guy they were questioning about uh, murdering someone and he's sitting there and he absolutely was stone-faced and absolutely completely convincing that he didn't do it and everything else. And they asked him outright and said, did you kill that person, right? And... He just said, no. And then when they played the video back, you could see him absolutely deadpan, right? No guilt at all, no guilt at all. And the moment he said no, there's a fraction of a second. I think it's like one frame of a 24 frames per second film that showed him looking guilty of sin. And if I put that picture up and said, did this person commit the crime? All day long, you'd be sitting there saying, yeah, yeah, that guy looks guilty of sin. If you'd chosen frames on either side of that guilty frame, you would have said absolutely innocent. So to the human eye, as we're watching it, and even to us consciously communicating with this person, you would believe that he was telling the truth. However, there'll be a niggle potentially in your unconscious that would sit there and say, I'm not trusting what this person's saying. Or I just got a hunch that this guy's did it, or I'm just get the feeling that we're not hearing the truth. So what I'm saying here is you might not know exactly what the truth is, but more often than not, we know we're not hearing it right now. So when someone gives you a present that they don't have the positive intent behind of giving it to you, it's not that you're going to pick 
picked up that present from them and, you know, you'll be sitting there going to your friend instead of saying, oh, they didn't want to give me a present. I don't know why they gave me a present. It might be that obvious. But even if they do all the right things and give you all the right triggers and they smile politely and give you a hug and they gush and everything else, it's really possible that when you leave and talk to your friend, you'll be like, look, it's a nice thing for them to do. I get that. But you know what? I, I just don't know. There's something about that person or there's something going on or there's something under the surface. You've had this feeling yourself many, many times with people. It might have been in your younger days. Maybe you are still in your younger days when you're at a bar and someone approached you and maybe they chatted you up or, you know, you just met someone networking. And when they approached you, you know, the hairs on your back just go up. And it's not because of how they look. You're not being prejudiced in any way, shape or form. It's not even necessarily what they're saying. There's something about the person you inherently distrust or there's something about the person that you just feel, you know, uncomfortable with. And we get this all of the time. We don't know what the truth is. We're not saying that person's a murderer or you know, that person, you know, I don't know, he's an embezzler or something like that. What we're saying is, I don't know what it is, but I don't like that. I don't trust that or I don't believe that or I'm, there's something else going on here. You have that experience. I have that experience. And so does everybody else. So the truth of the matter is, if we gave a present in this analogy with the wrong intent, it's not going to be the same experience for the person receiving as it would have been if we gave it with the right intent. Secondly, moreover, we get a very different experience as well. When we give a present for the wrong reasons, we don't feel anywhere near as good about that as if we give presents for the right reasons. I'm hoping this analogy is translating into these quadrants about making sure that your actions, that your goals, that what it is you're striving for are all the right things for all of the right reasons. I'll share with you another analogy and that is dating. Now, I don't know where you are in your dating life. Maybe you've been married for 20 years. Maybe you're newly single. Maybe you're just starting out. But if you imagine, or if you've had this in the past, most of us have, if you've been around a little while, If you imagine that instead of we're looking at the right thing for the right reasons and the wrong thing for the wrong reasons, imagine now what we're looking at here is people and in relationships, specifically our intimate relationships. And I want you to imagine if you haven't had one of these, but if you have had one of these, think back to when you were with the wrong person for the wrong reasons. And I want you to remember the car crash that was that relationship. And if you haven't had one, I want you to imagine the car crash that would be that relationship. Now, I'm not here to tell you exactly what the right reasons are to be in a relationship or really what the wrong reasons are. But, you know, we might agree on a couple of things. We might agree that, you know, it's a positive thing to be in a relationship to enhance each other's lives. We might think it's a positive thing to be in a relationship because together we are stronger as a couple and united. We're trying to create something better than both of us. This makes sense, whether it's a family, whether it's a a business like me and Tracy in our relationship in business and in life. But you can see that they would be, I would say, we would agree that they were the right reasons for a relationship. The wrong reasons would be because if I don't have someone in my life, I'm not valued, I'm not worthy, whatever it might be, right? I'm lonely, I'm miserable, and therefore I'm valueless, my self-esteem drops. You know, that would be the wrong reason to be in a relationship. Being in a relationship with someone just because there's no one else around would be, you know, the wrong reason to be in a relationship. So imagine if you've got someone or yourself in the past and you've been in a relationship with the wrong person for all the wrong reasons, that relationship is a car crash. It's never going to work out. So then as we move into the bottom left quadrant, we move into the wrong thing for the right reasons. So now let's translate that into you know, intimate partners again. So let's imagine now that you're with the wrong person, but you're doing it for the right reasons. In other words, you know, you're doing it because, you know, you're ready to settle down with someone and to create something special. You're ready to give yourself fully to someone that you want to unite with someone to create, you know, an amazing life together for each other, whatever it might be, right? So you're in the, you know, you're in the relationship for all the right reasons, okay? But it's the wrong person. How's that relationship going to turn out? It's never going to work out. And I'm sure in your history, if you've been around a little bit like me, you know, you'll have your version of that as well, where you were, you know, with the wrong person, but you really had got your head, you know, your mindset into the right place in terms of you were ready to have a proper relationship, a serious committed relationship. It still doesn't work out, however, because of course, at the end of the day, it's the wrong person and there's nothing you can do about that. Then we move to the top right-hand quadrant, and now we're with the right person for the wrong reasons. 
So now let's imagine, right, this is the right person in our life. They've come along, you know, and they could have been the one. And I always say this, this is the one. If you look in your past, most of us have got one of these as well. It's the ex-partner, it's the ex-girlfriend or whatever that could have been the one. You know, if things had been different, if times had been different, if I'd met them at a different time or in different circumstances, you could see that that could have been the one. More often than not, that's the right person. Like, like she or he was the right person for you. But if you weren't in it for the right reasons, you know, if you weren't in the right place for you, if you weren't in the right time of your life, in other words, you weren't in the right place to have that relationship, then again, even though you were the right person, it wouldn't have worked out. Top left-hand corner, right in that place there. I'm hoping you found this person already. If not, keep looking because that's where you want to be dating and that's definitely where you want to be marrying if marrying is something that you want to do or settling down with your life partner. The top left-hand corner is where you want to be hanging out. Up there is when you are with the right person for the right reasons. I'm going to sit and say that every single one of these marriages or relationships works out. What I am going to say is this, they have a much better chance than all the others. And more importantly, you will be having a great relationship up in that space. So you're with the right person for you. You're the right person for them. And you're in this relationship for all of the right reasons. That's where the magic happens. So if you look at your business, if you look at your goals, if you look at what you're aspiring to achieve, I want you to sort of challenge yourself a little bit and say, you know, what is it I really want here? And am I doing it for the right reasons? So for example, trying to make yourself successful so you can give a big fuck you to your teachers back at school might feel like a powerful force for motivation and drive, but actually it's a negative drive. It's a negative motivation. And you're never going to feel as good about creating the success that you're creating in your life if you're doing it from a negative place. You may even get the same result, although more often than not, you won't. But even if you get the same result, you become rich, you become successful, but it's fueled by that, you know, that, that anger, that resentment. It might be fueled by that, that toxicity of that time in your life. And therefore, even when you create this thing, achieve this thing, you're not enjoying the process of creating it because it's negative fuel. But also, just like the cake, it's very possible it will all be a little bit spoiled because it didn't have the pure intent behind it. It didn't have the right reasons, the right drivers, the right purpose behind it. Let's say, for example, you want to get fit and slim and healthy. I think that's almost certainly the right thing to do for most people. You'll live longer. You'll have a much better quality of life. However, if you're losing weight because you want the world to accept you, I would argue that that's not the right reason. If you're losing weight because your mum judges you or your husband judges you or your wife judges you, if you want to lose weight because of some you know, misconstrued idea that if you are overweight, you're unlovable, but if you do lose weight, then you'll be lovable. If you've got some weird, you know, kind of screwed up self-worth going on and you're trying to solve a deeper problem emotionally by the superficiality of losing weight or creating a slim body, I would say that was the wrong reasons, even though I would argue that for all of us, being healthier and being slim and being athletic and energetic and, you know, fit and healthy has got to be the right thing for all of us, right? I can't think, I can't think how that could possibly be the wrong thing to do. However, we can do it for the wrong reasons. And again, not only will it not solve the underlying issue if we have anything going on there, but also we'll never truly get the result that we want because we're not solving the right problem. Does this make sense? So it could be the right thing to, to lose weight, you may be motivated negatively at the moment, that's going to kill your enjoyment of the process of losing weight, and it may spoil and tarnish the end result of that for you. So what you need to do is say, right, is it the right thing for me? Yeah, I think absolutely this is the right goal, this is the right outcome. Is it the right reason? And you say, you know what, if I'm being totally honest, it's fueled by a little bit of resentment, a little bit of toxicity. It's, you know, it's fueled by a little bit of negativity. It's probably not the right reason. It doesn't mean the goal's the wrong goal. It just means you need to tune in to a more purposeful, more positively intentful reason for achieving that goal. So it's not saying that any goal that you have that is the right goal, but you're doing it for the wrong reasons. That's not saying that you should dump the goal. It's not saying, you know, unanimously that that's the wrong goal for you. What I'm saying is you might need to work a little bit harder to come up with more positively intentful reasons for achieving that goal. 
And every single member of my success groups and my extreme growth masterminds, they all follow my goal setting methodology, my goal setting program over the Christmas period. So they're getting warmed up. They're getting ready to get stuck into that as we're speaking. And within that, one of the pressure tests of the goal setting that I do is once they've got their goals is just to take some time to evaluate that these are the right goals. And we do that at a number of points throughout the goal setting process. So we can be pretty sure by a certain point that these are definitely the right goals for us. But I do do a little bit of a check in and say, look, are we really going for them for the purest of reasons? And in that moment, it's not that you dump the goal. It's just you might have to dig a little bit deeper to come up with some more positive reasons for achieving that goal and achieving that outcome. And if you really can't find a positive reason for achieving that goal, it's all negatively driven, then I would question that it's probably not the right goal as well. So in your own life, I'm not going to take you through the whole goal setting process or anything else, but in your own life, look at what you're working towards. Look at what you're trying to achieve in your personal life, in your business, finances, in your health, your weight, your love life, your family life. Think about what it is you're trying to create. Is it the right thing? Is it for the right reasons? Think about the cake mix. Think about the past lovers and relationships. If it's the wrong thing for the wrong reasons, it's a car crash. If it's the wrong thing for the right reasons, it probably isn't going to work out the way you want. And if it's the right thing for the wrong reasons, it's also probably not going to work out the way you want. However, if it's the right thing for the right reason, you are in with a massive shot of achieving an awesome goal for all the right reasons. It will deliver above and beyond even what you probably think it will. Nice one. Thank you for that, guys. Make sure your goals are absolutely in alignment with you as a person. Make sure they're positively aligned with what it is you're trying to create as an experience of life as well as what you're trying to create in the material world, what you're trying to manifest out there in your business, in your finances, in your life and in your health. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't yet done the six-figure fast track and you are a business owner and you haven't done a hundred grand yet in turnover, you are missing a massive trick. The Six Figure Fast Track is how to take your five-figure business to 100K in turnover or more in the next 12 months or less. I'll take you through the six-figure mindset, the six-figure business model, and the six-figure methodology, the day-to-day actions and activity that can take you and your business to 100 grand in the next 12 months or even less. Get yourself on that. It's completely free of charge. It's a free resource for you. You'll find that at biggerbrighterbolder.co.uk forward slash fast track i'll drop the link in the description as well get yourself on the fast track take your business onto that fast track i look forward to seeing you next time and until then as always be successful Leveling up, extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up.